Hello and welcome to my channel. In this channel, we explain various nursing concepts in a simple form for better and easy understanding. These videos could be used by both LPN and RN students as well as nurses who are trying to refresh their basic concepts. My name is Nas Mosh. So in this video, we're going to talk about cancer management and some chemotherapy complications that arise and how we take care of this and the various types of chemotherapies or treatments that we give our oncology patients. So let's start with cancer management. So cancer treatment is based on the origin of the cancer. So whatever the cancer starts, the origin of it. And we could treat it by tumor reduction, and it can be done through topical procedures or by destruction of the main arteries that provide blood flow to the tumor. So if you cut supply, if you cut the food chain, whatever is above it is not going to get fed. So it's not going to continue growing. We can do tumor execution, which is can be open or an endoscopy. And as well, we can do chemotherapy and it involves the administration of systemic or local cystotoxic medication that damage the cell's DNA or destroy rapidly dividing cells. Some of the complications for chemotherapy include mucocystitis, mucocystitis, right? And what is this? It's the inflammation of the mucosal membrane. And for this, we normally provide frequent oral care before and after meals. We educate the patient to avoid mouthwash that contains alcohol or any glycerin. So those lemon glycerin swabs, if you see it in a question with a patient who has mucocystitis, it's not recommended and they should rinse their mouth twice daily with saline and use a soft toothbrush and avoid foods that could cause pain or damage the patient will also end up with anemia and anemia this involves a decrease in red blood cell count and we administer a potain alpha which increases rbc count and as well as ferrous sulfate which is iron because iron is the key component for red blood cells we encourage the patient to increase an intake in iron, or folate, as well as B12 rich foods. And we encourage frequent rest periods because if you don't have enough red blood cells, you're not having frequent or the required amount of perfusion. So you're going to be tired often. Malnutrition is also another complication and this could end up due to chemotherapy can cause nausea and vomiting, which can lead to malnutrition. And with this, we administer emetics. 30 minutes prior to therapy. So Zofran, Megastrol, which is a s appetite stimulant, could also be administered. So you give Zofran 30 minutes before therapy. And Megastrol, this is actually the, it gives the patient the urge, you know, appetite stimulant, so they can be able to eat. We encourage these patients to consume a high calorie diet, high in protein because remember protein helps with the healing process and nutrient dense diet and to avoid consuming liquids with their meals so these are the patient you tell them eat your meal first then you drink your fluids in between meals not fluids with meals and for them room temperature or cooler foods are easier to consume so not don't give them too hot or too cold just warm food is good for them thrombocytopenia is another complication and this is a decrease in platelet count and for this patient since we have platelet decrease they're high risk of what bleeding so we place this place a patient on a bleeding precaution we monitor for bleeding in what their stool their urine their IV sites and even after injections these are the patient we avoid giving them the injections unless and we hold for them normally you'll see for the test somebody who has thrombocytopenia we hold for at least 10 minutes not five and we educate this patient to use electrical razors, so soft toothbrushes, and avoid blowing their nose so hard, right? Because they'll blow their nose and they could even end up with a nosebleed. And since they have thromb thrombocytopenia, they could bleed a lot. And they also avoid NSAIDs because NSAIDs have that tendency of causing GI bleed. They could also end up with neutropenia. And what is neutropenia? This is when we have insufficient number of neutrophils or a low white blood cell count. So with this patient, since they have low count of white blood cells, and what our blood, white blood cells are, or white blood cells are the ones who fight infection. So with this patient, we'll place this patient on a neutropenic precaution. This is the reverse isolation. Protective gear is placed on the patient. So with this patient, you're not wearing 
the protective clothing. It's reversed. It's them. We are protecting them from getting an infection. We administer filgastrim, which helps to boost neutrophil count. And we, uh, we educate this patient on regular temp temperature checks because this could show us uh, if they're getting an infection. Avoid crowds. Avoid consuming raw foods. Their foods need to be cooked. Cook the veggies. They should avoid yard work as well as changing cart litter. They need to wash their dishes and toothbrushes in hot water or in a dishwasher, okay, just to prevent this infection. And also with neutropenia, most of the questions you'll see are fresh flowers, fresh fruit. Now, this patient's, no, no for them. Canned fruits is better than a fresh fruit for them. So let's talk about various therapies that we normally give this patients and we'll talk about radiotherapy. So radiotherapy could be delivered through a teletherapy, which is a distance treatment or through bronchitherapy, which is short and close therapy. So with this, it involves ionizing radiation to target tissues and destroy cells. We place the patient in a private room with the door closed and a warning sign on the door. And we have the nurse wear a dosimeter and a lead protective apron while preparing care or taking care of this patient. You'll see a question asking you, what is wrong with this nurse? What did they do wrong with the radiotherapy? They closed the door, they carried linen. We avoid sharing things. We leave whatever it is, a blood pressure cuff, everything. We'll leave the poles, the IV poles. We leave it in that patient's room and you can't move a, a dosimeter from one nurse to the other because we're not going to know how much radiation this one it's going to be off so hormonal therapy so with hormonal therapy this therapy is effective against tumors that are supported or suppressed by hormones ag like breast and prostate they need estrogen and testosterone so this work wet with hormonal therapy Immunotherapy. So it uses biologic response modifiers which alter the patient's biological response to cancer tumor cells. Okay. So antibiotics, cytokinins, and other immune substances usually produced by the immune system are administered to increase the body's defense against cancer. Photodynamic therapy. So with photodynamic therapy, this involves the injection of photosynthesized agent that is absorbed by all cells in the body. Then one to two days later, when the agent is in the cancer cell, the tumor is exposed to the wavelength of light via an endoscope, causing elimination of the cancer cell or size reduction of the tumor. So with this photodynamic, you inject something into the patient. You inject this photosynthesized uh, agent and you let it get absorbed in the cells. Then when the patient is exposed to this wavelength or waves, right? Any type of the waves that they're using, that cell either dies or it gets shrinked. Supportive treatment. This is the assistance the patient requires due to altered body function or emotional and spiritual need. And with supportive treatment, it actually depends with the patient. If the patient is religious, if the patient is Catholic, if the patient is Jewish, we respect the patient. We treat the patient as a whole. We provide as much as possible to make the patient comfortable, to reduce any stress factors, because with increased stress factors, these patients are not going to heal well. So we help them with not only their emotional but also their spiritual needs that's it for this video see you in the next one thank you for watching please like share and subscribe to my channel see you on the next one bye